This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. I'm not holding them because they're too heavy for me to hold both at once. It's the Alienware 17 R4 versus the Acer Predator 17, both running Intel Core i7 CPUs, NVIDIA GTX 1070, dedicated graphics, of course, dedicated, DDR4 RAM, a lot of similarities here, zone backlit keyboards, all sorts of things. So several of you have asked how to pick between these two. We're going to find out now. Both of these machines are around $1,800 street price as configured, and they're configured fairly similarly. Core i7-6700HQ or the 7700HQ, which is the seventh generation CPU, both of them are coming out just now for these two lines. NVIDIA GTX 1070 dedicated graphics, a 1920 by 1080 full HD IPS matte non-touch display. Both are LG panels, by the way, in both of these laptops. 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and a boot SSD. For that price, you get a little bit more with the Predator 17. 256 gig SSD in RAID 0 configuration for more speed versus the 128 gig SATA M2 SSD in the base Alienware. And then the base means the, the base model that we're looking at here that has the 128 gig boot SSD. You can spend even more money and you can get a 256 gig or even bigger PCIe SSD. But 128 gigs on the $1,800 configuration we're talking about here to be competitive price-wise. You get a G-Sync display at 75 hertz on the Predator versus no G-Sync on our $1,800 Alienware configuration, but you do get Optimus, so you get switchable graphics on the Alienware. You do not have that on the Predator. If you have G-Sync, you do not get switchable graphics. There's a hardware reason for that. It has nothing to do with Acer or Alienware or anything. This is an NVIDIA thing. Now that said, if you want to spend more money, Alienware does have a G-Sync 2K display and also a 4K option. And Acer also has a 4K option. Both of them for their 4K options are high ga color gamut displays, 95% of Adobe RGB. But going on, the Acer has a DVD writer, which is swappable with the included Frost Core, which is a removable fan, cool master fan, which helps a little bit with cooling, yeah, you know, but so for those of you who actually need an optical drive, keep that in mind. Both have killer double shot Wi-Fi with Bluetooth. It's 1435 AC on our Alienware, $50 upcharge if you want the 1535 AC that is standard on the Predator 17. Now the Alienware fights back in one way. When it comes to features, you get free money. You get Toby eye tracking, which is kind of useless, honestly, for games, but the nice part is you also get that Windows Hello Facial Recognition IR camera for login versus nada with the Acer. You just type in your password or your PIN, that's it. Though Acer is famous for myriad configurations and model numbers that can baffle even us, the Predator line is actually fairly small and distinct. You get a Core i7, 6700 or 7700 HQ. There is no overclockable CPU option. With Dell, if you want to get the overclockable Core i7 CPU, you can do that. With the Predator, you can get it with the GTX 1060 or the 1070. Right now, there is no 1080. I suspect they're going to refresh the Predator 17X, which we reviewed, and it had a desktop GPU last time around with the 1080, probably sometime soon. Alienware has all the assembly line prowess of Dell behind it, so you can do the two different CPU options. You can get a GTX 1060, 1070, 1080. And surprisingly, the Alienware 17 is actually one of the most affordable GTX 1080 laptops if you really want to go high end. So there you have it. If you have a particular spec or configuration that you need, that can be important. In terms of looks and build quality, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I know some of you complain about every single gaming laptop looking well, way too much like a gaming laptop. Disclosure, I like gaming laptops. I like it when they look kind of tricked out and out there as long as they don't look cheesy and cheap. And neither of these looks cheesy and cheap. In fact, they're two of the best made and looking gaming laptops currently on the market in terms of unified design, consistent finishes, all that sort of thing. Both of these are built like tanks. Both of these have the same kind of design for getting into the internals, which is a service bay for your readily accessible SSD, hard drive, and RAM slots. And then you have to take off the complete bottom cover if you want to have access to more stuff. They're both rigid. They both look good in different ways. I'd say probably the Alienware is the more work-friendly in its kind of battleship gray and black versus the Acer with many red accents on a black casing. The Predator does weigh a little less. One, 9.3 pounds versus 10 pounds for the Alienware. So neither of these is exactly what you call portable, folks, but, well, 
you know, I can feel the difference in weight, honestly, carrying them around. When it comes to taking them apart, neither of them is difficult. The Alienware has well-labeled screws. The Acer is pretty clear and understandable. It's a little bit easier with the Acer. Say you want to repaste your CPU and GPU. You actually really have to pull out the entire motherboard on the Alienware, particularly because the way the fans are mounted. You just really can't get to them very easily unless you take out the motherboard. With the Predator, you don't have to take out the motherboard. Just take off the bottom cover, the full bottom cover on it, loosen the fans that are held by two screws, and boom, you're there. It's pretty easy to do. So a little bit easier to work with the Predator. By the way, the, I, in fact, did repaste the, the Predator 17, and the paste on there was pretty good stuff. Nice, thick, heavyweight, gray stuff, not dried out, all that sort of thing. So no, they're not a cheese balling on paste. And of course, Alienware has recently improved the thermal paste and the thermal pads that they're using on the Alienware laptop, so we have good heat sink contact now with the CPU and GPU there. Both of these are large chassis desktop replacement laptops, so they are not going to get burning hot. The keyboard deck on both of these is at most warm. It is not hot to work. And on the bottom side, well, neither of them gets burning hot. Certainly, the Alienware gets a little hotter. It may be in part because of the big ventilation grills on the bottom, but mostly because it is the thinner machine. The thinner it is, well, the closer the internals are to you. And that's the dead center rear area, and it's still not burning hot. In terms of keyboard, both of these have programmable zone RGB backlighting and macro keys. Predator has an island style keyboard that's currently more popular these days. But you know what? I like the edge-to-edge -edge keyboard on the Alienware as well, and they are both superb to type on. They're two of my favorite laptops to type on, should you actually imagine putting them on your lap, particularly. Sound, well, they both have big laptop sound because they are big laptops and they're great for gaming and videos. Both have subwoofers facing downward. Acer's dual driver design, so there's six drivers total. You got two on the left, two on the right, two for the subwoofer. It gets the win here. The difference isn't monstrous, but it's noticeably fuller and richer. In terms of ports, these should be pretty well featured, right? They're big machines, desktop replacements yet again. Acer has four USB 3.0 ports versus two on the Dell. You almost wonder what Dell is doing with all that big footprint in real estate there. But again, the thinification takes its toll too as to what they have room to put in. The SD, there's an SD card slot on the Acer, but not on the Alienware. Both have a USB-C Gen 2 slash Thunderbolt 3 port. The Alienware has a graphics amplifier port as well. And I like that. That's a real upside because the Alienware graphics amplifier is a lot more affordable than Thunderbolt 3 external GPU boxes like the Razer Core right now. How about performance? This is a gaming laptop, really. That is paramount, isn't it? You're looking at virtually the same specs here, so there's not a wide margin of difference. And you'll see the benchmark comparisons that we throw up here. The Predator does score higher, though, in nearly every benchmark. It could be because of the faster SSD. Our unit had the M2 SATA on the Alienware versus the, the RAID 0 SSD in the Predator. And I think there's less thermal micromanagement. Alienware, it really depends. They keep bouncing around from BIOS to BIOS with what their focus is, either cooling the CPU or giving you more headroom for clocking, all that sort of thing. But both of them will stay at 3.1 gigahertz turbo boost using 100% CPU utilization using a test like OOCT if you're testing it that way. But again, the Predator is faster. It's also the one who has a hotter CPU and GPU too. So they're pushing it a little bit harder. Both have a two and a half inch drive bay inside for comparing internals and two M2 SSD slots. Alienware has a third half height SSD slot. I'm not sure how really useful that is. It's pretty hard to find half height SSDs and I think two is enough for most of us, but well, it's there. Alienware uses large magnetic bearing fans and they do a good job. Acer uses their metal bladed aero fans, which they're mighty proud of, which even has a feature that reverses the fans every three hours to get any dust on there, well, off, so you don't have to take it apart and clean it. And of course they throw in that frost core removable fan that you can swap into the DVD drive bag. The Acer has four RAM slots. Two are pretty darn hard to get to. You would have to pull out the motherboard because they're on the underside, i.e. facing the keyboard, not the bottom when you take the cover off. But there are two accessible RAM slots as well. So a total of four RAM slots. Alienware has two. So max RAM on the Alienware is 32 gigs. Max RAM on the Predator is 64. 
When it comes to displays, like I said, the, if you go with the full HD option on either of these, you're getting a matte, non-touch, IPS, LG-made display. And quality is very similar. Both go a bit above 300 nits of brightness. Both show some backlight bleed, though I would say that Alienware generally does better than Acer with the backlight bleed issue. Same sRGB and Adobe RGB measurements, which is about 93% of sRGB, 72% of Adobe RGB. So that one's pretty much a wash there. Now Acer offers a 4K 95% Adobe RGB display that is IPS technology and it's really lovely looking. We saw it on the Predator 17X model. Dell has a 4K sharp IXO display that's also real sweet looking. And it's high color gamut too. Now Dell has a middle offering. It's the 2560 by 1440 and it's 2K TN panel with fast refresh rate because TN panels do offer fast refresh rates, which is important to first person shooter people and 400 nits of brightness, kind of crazy. I like the resolution jump there, but I'm not a fan of even a good TN panel so much because of the lower contrast and the weaker viewing angles. How about noise? One of the reasons at least I get a 17 inch gaming laptop isn't just for the bigger screen, it's because I want something that runs cooler and makes less noise. The Alienware CPU runs a bit cooler, but the fans are much louder too. It's one of the louder 17-inch gaming laptops on the market. So there's a trade-off there. Yes, you can have your CPU be chilling, but <laughs> you gotta listen to all that noise and maybe wear headphones when you're gaming. Typically, when I game for a few hours on the Alienware 17, and boy, let me tell you, I've put hundreds of hours into games, so I spend a lot of time on these laptops gaming. The, the cores are about 65 Celsius. Well, the Acer is at about 71 Celsius. So you got a little bit hotter running on the Acer, but both of these are well within respectable and non-alarming range when it comes to temperatures. Both keep the GPU really chilling. I mean, low 60s a lot of the time to mid 60s or so. And this is gaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second on the Alienware and 75 frames per second to match the G-Sync on the Acer. So we're not pushing this, we're not doing 120 frame rates and turning off G-Sync and defeating V-Sync or anything like that. We're going with the way most people would probably actually use the machine, which is has its ships. Lastly, there's support. For Acer, you get a two-year warranty, which is nice, but it's your usual, you know, if there's something wrong, you gotta ship it to them and you gotta wait for them to ship it back to you. Dell, which is typical for the United States, most companies have a one-year warranty. They have a one-year warranty, but it's on-site, so that's kind of neat. So. Uh, one thing I like about them, if you're pretty knowledgeable about computer internals and you have a small problem, they'll actually ship you the part if you want to, don't want to mess with having a tech come to visit or shipping your laptop to them. But you do get on-site service, so you can have a technician come to your house. Uh, what's the benefit of that? You don't have to be without your machine while you're shipping it here and there. And if you like to really micromanage what those techs do to your laptop, you can be there and watch them and, you know, coach them if you see fit. <laughs> There you have it, Alienware versus Predator. It sounds like a bad movie for TV, doesn't it? <laughs> In the end, obviously some of you are gonna pick Alienware because it's the well-known name. A lot more people have heard of it. Others of you are more budget conscious. You might go for the Acer Predator for that reason. Certainly you can get more for less money with the Predator, though the, the cost divide isn't that great unless you find one on a great sale. Of course, right now there are great sales, so that leads me to say that one's the better bargain. But you know, Dell, if you call them up, they'll, they'll do deals on the phone and drop prices and stuff like that. Best Buy typically sells for less than Dell's website. So there are opportunities there. Obviously with the, the Alienware, you get that in-home service for one year. With Acer, you just get the regular depot warranty, but it's two years, which is nice. They're both built like tanks. They both use well the same LG IPS displays. If you go for the 1080 version, you're looking at the same CPUs, but with the Alienware, you can configure it higher if you want to. There you have it. Me, personally, I'm kind of falling in love with that Predator, which is a big surprise, because I was impressed with the Alienware 17. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.